Good morning. Welcome to our liturgy. Today is the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We invite you to take a moment and quiet yourselves and prepare to celebrate this sacred mystery. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all those on live stream, and good morning to all you who are present in the church today. Yay! <laughs> It is a great blessing to have you here today, limited numbers, yes, but it is still a great blessing to be with you here today. And we come here recognizing God's mercy, God's love, God's blessing for all of us. And so as we prepare to enter these sacred and holy mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came for all sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And together we all proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the word of God. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves 
in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward them by demanding interest from them. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak is his, this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O oh, Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim. Am, am I am safe from my enemies? The Lord lives and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God my savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declared about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as I said earlier, welcome back. It's great to have you in church. I hope you might have noticed it's a little brighter in here. You can uh, actually, if you had a book in your hand, you could look at it and you could read it. Uh, so it's a wonderful blessing to be here with you today. And you might notice a few things different than what we normally do. Uh, we're sitting social distance apart. Uh, we remind ourselves uh, that's important. Uh, so if you're not sitting in a pew with the green dots and you're sitting in a pew with red dots, uh, move, right? Uh, we try to sit as close as we can uh, in the middle today just because after every Mass uh, by the county, we have to sanitize the church. And the closer we can sit together, or the more, not, not closer in breaking social distancing, but the more that we sit in areas that uh, are, are compact, so to speak, it's easier for our cleaning crew to come in and, and do the sanitation uh, qu quickly so that we can prepare for the next Mass. Uh, you'll also notice that no one was singing. Glenda played us this wonderful entrance song and our Alleluia. And because we're not supposed to sing inside, or not allowed to sing inside, we did not sing. Uh, but we will get there. Uh, we, we will move forward and continue to try and, and uh, serve God in different ways. You'll also notice that uh, if you've been watching live stream, usually when we read or proclaim the word of God, we take our masks off. But once again, uh, because of, certain, of the orders that were given to us, we are wearing masks during the whole of Mass, except for at the time of receiving communion, which I will talk about in a little bit. But let's talk about the Gospel. It's an interesting question that the Pharisee asks Jesus today, because it's the most simple question that could ever be asked. It would be like asking you or me or any young person in this, how did Jesus teach us to pray? And I hope most of us would sit there and say, well, he said to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. It's a prayer that we learn when we're very young, maybe right after we learn the angel of God and the Hail Mary. Right? It's one of those very first prayers that we know. And it's always beautiful to see that idea that, you know, when you have like little going over to our Catholic school or into our CCD classes, and you say to little kids, pray the Our Father for me, and they get very serious. They go like, Our Father, who art in heaven. I mean, it's very wonderful to see. And so if you understand Jewish tradition, what's being asked today is, Jesus is basically asked to repeat the Shema, which is something that every little Jewish boy and girl would learn at the knees of their, on the knees of their parents. You can imagine St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother Mary sitting with Jesus and saying, this is what you need to know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That is the first and the greatest commandment because it was something that they were called to repeat. In the book of Deuteronomy, it says to pray that prayer whether you're at home or at rest, whether you're busy or at work, right? To pray and to say that over and over again, reminding ourselves of our place. And so for them to ask Jesus that question, it would be like, okay, let me say it again. But oftentimes we get tripped up by the simplest questions. And maybe that's what the scholar of the law was trying to 
tricked Jesus into. We've asked him all these really hard questions. We posed these puzzles to him. And he's, asked, he's answered with wisdom and love and gentleness. And sometimes a sharp parable. So let's ask him a simple one to see if that might trip him up. Right? So I'm going to ask you a simple question. Why are you Catholic? Now, most people will sit there and respond, as I did for much, much of my life. I was baptized Catholic. My mom and dad are Catholic. My grandparents are Catholic. Everyone in my family is Catholic. Of course I'm Catholic. Well, and, that, and that's a good reason. And thanks be to God for my parents and my God grandparents and my great-grandparents and all of those who, who, who pass on the faith. But it's not an answer that ultimately fulfills the question. Why am I Catholic isn't something that is given, that is put upon me, but it must be something that I accept as a gift and that I carry for myself. It's what we do with our youth at confirmation, right? To sit there and say, are you ready to accept the fullness of the faith? Are you ready to practice your faith? Are you ready to live your faith? Are you ready to be a Catholic, not just in word, but in the deeds that you do. In fact, that's what St. Paul in the second, the second reading today reminds us, right? He reminds us that we don't have to, we don't have to say a word. It should be, why are you Catholic? And you should be able to sit there and say, see how I live my life. That is why. Because in it, we turn away from the idols of the world. As St. Paul reminds us, that when we accept Jesus Christ, when we accept our Catholic faith, we turn away from the idols of the world where they do not control us or hinder us or block us in. Where we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our very breath. With each and every moment of our lives where we turn away from those things that separate us from one another, right? where we don't make things like politics into a way of life, where we don't make our job into the ultimate goal, and where we don't put demands upon God so that I will be happy, but rather we choose to serve God in the fullness of who we are, Trusting in God's grace and blessing within our life. Trusting within that divine providence that God showers upon us. Trusting in the miracles and the wonders and the joys that surround us all the days of our lives. Because if we truly believe, then my faith becomes alive and it becomes who I am. Why am I Catholic? It's because that is who I am ultimately in the end. Because I truly believe that Jesus came into the world. I truly believe that he suffered and died for my sins so that I might be redeemed. And that he suffered and died for each one of us so each one of us might be redeemed. Excluding no one. And that he offered himself to us, body, blood, soul, and divinity. He said he would never depart from us. And so I come to be with him. I come to share my life with him. I come to serve him. And so our call as Catholics, our call as Christians is to give our lives to our brothers and sisters because the second commandment is like the first. If we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, but we do not love our brothers and sisters, then our faith is empty. I think someone said that in the gospel. And so let us turn to God trusting in that miracle of life that he has given to us, trusting that we 
repeat with our Jewish brothers and sisters that I do and truly love my Lord with all my heart, with all my breath, and with all my mind, each and every moment of my life, whether I'm at work or at play or I'm at home or away, and to pass that on to our children, to pass that on to those who do not believe, to pass that on to the world. Because we are back in church. And while you guys are here, there are about 60 of us today. We could have 100, but there's about 60 of us today, which I'm very happy about, very, very pleased about. Some of our brothers and sisters who normally go to St. Lucie don't know that we're open. They not watch us on live stream too often. They kind of gotten used to Sunday being a morning where they can just sit on the couch and get ready for the football, right? And so your work this week, and it's not homework, please, so be aware of that. It's just your work is to make sure that when you encounter our brothers and sisters from St. Lucie, that you remind them that we are open. Limited, yes. They have to sign up, yes. But we are open and that we are ready to receive. Because I'll tell you what our week we looked like this week at St. Lucie's here within our church, right? We began Monday with our very first Mass since January 1st in the church with people other than Andrew and a few musicians and, and so the technical teams and things like that. So it was a really wonderful blessing. On Wednesday, we celebrated our first funeral in the Mass since that time. A very long-time parishioner who had died and it was a wonderful gift. On Thursday, we celebrated our second funeral. On Saturday, we had baptisms. We also had a Mass where some of those kids that are on that board in the back, those, those, that board that's been up since February last year, finally received the sacraments of initiation with their parents. And it was a wonderful and joyful Mass. They had waited long since last Easter, waiting and waiting and waiting till we could get it together. But it was a great blessing to celebrate with them. Then, of course, Sunday Mass. And we'll get other things here, too. A couple weeks, we're going to have our first wedding in the church for a long, long, long time. And Rachel and Robert are very, very happy about that. But it is that time where we come to celebrate. Because a building isn't just a place but it's where we encounter Jesus in a very real way with our brothers and sisters. And so I would invite you to invite others to come and to celebrate, to talk about what we do, why we do it, how we do it. If they say we're afraid, okay, that's okay. We will pray with them and we will pray for them. Because I understand not everybody is ready to come, but yet we are called to come. So I'd invite you to do that for me. Uh, one little bit of catechesis before we begin the Eucharistic part of our celebration. Transition from the Liturgy of the Word to the Liturgy of the Eucharist. At communion time, you'll be invited to come forward. The priest or the Eucharistic minister will be standing on one of these little blue circles in front. You'll come forward keeping social distance like you do over in Safeway. After you receive communion, you'll take it in your hand and you'll walk to this other blue dot here where you will lower your mask, receive communion, and then return to your seat. It's not that complicated, uh, but it is what the bishop has asked us to do in receiving communion, not to receive directly in front of the priest or the Eucharistic minister, just once again for safety and health reasons. Okay? That is my one little bit of catechist, catechesis today. So I'd invite you to please stand at this time as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, 
light from light, to God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are called to love our neighbor as ourselves, and so we call to mind not only our needs, but the needs of our neighbors near and far. For God's holy church, as we proclaim Christ the world by our love for each other and our neighbors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the citizens of the world look out for and support one another, caring especially for refugees and migrants. We pray to the Lord. that we may meet the challenge of accepting all people as neighbors, especially those who look, speak, or act differently than we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord On this Priesthood Sunday, for all ordained priests, that our prayers and support may give them sustenance as they grow in their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that they may be healed and strengthened, and for all who have died, including Antonio Lopez Hernandez, that God may give them the promise of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear for the intention of this Mass, for Mark O'Donnell, we pray to the Lord. God of love, you hear the cry of the poor, graciously listen to these our prayers, and grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you again for your generosity throughout these times. Uh, if you're watching us on live stream and wish to give at this time, you may do so using a text to pledge or one of our um, PayBee or WeShare apps. Uh, if you are here in the church, there will be no collection at this time. As you leave the church, you can drop your money in the basket or your donation in the basket on the way out. Okay, thank you very much. And God bless you all. And thank you again for your support of our parish community.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Lucy, St. Clare, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope and Oscar, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to it their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us turn to one another and offer that sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to it.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Once more, thank you all very much for being here today. Just a few really quick things. Uh, one is uh, in our bulletin. There are bulletins in the back if you wish to take one. But if you touch it, you take it, right? So don't, you, you don't say, I'm going to look at this and set it back down. If you want to set it back down, there's trash cans in the corner to set it in, okay? Uh, same thing with the little booklets. In our bulletin, there's, uh, there's the letter from our bishop, Bishop Cantu, about our coming back to church, so to speak coming back into the buildings. Uh, it's on our website, also on the Diocesan website. It's a wonderful letter. I'd invite you to please uh, peruse it. He's also, this last couple of weeks, ri written a letter and done several videos on the elec upcoming election. Uh, he has also uh, wrote a really a short note to us about uh, our Holy Father Francis's remarks about civil unions uh, and other, that, that controversy that was about that. So please uh, take time to read our bishop's letter, and also uh, for those who have not yet voted, uh, take time to read the United States Conference's letter on uh, forming our conscience to vote, uh, to vote, right? To form our conscience to vote. So uh, wonderful stuff to do that with, okay? Uh, we did start catechism today. Yay! If you know someone who should be in catechism, yes, say yay, yes. If you know someone who should be in catechism and they're not, it's not too late. We're already late, so it's not too late. Uh, just call the parish office. There are sign-up forms on uh, the website, and we'll get, we'll get the children and all those uh, back and things. We are uh, low in numbers this year, but that doesn't, doesn't mean anything uh, because we've been low in numbers all year long with people at Mass. And so... But if you know, once again, that way of evangelizing, if you see someone that you know is Catholic and they have a second grader and they, are, they aren't talking about catechisms, that they say, you need to sign up at St. Lucie's right now and uh, help them do that if they can. Okay, thank you to all who are with us live streaming today. Thank you to all of us who are here present. Uh, and uh, once again, it's that reminder that as we leave the church, some, I know I, I, I saw some people waving to each other. Uh, Wait to hug till you get outside. Don't do it inside the church, okay? The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.